So can you write down the equation first? So that's uh, seven this is more complicated because of all these parameters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, uh, what the? Oh my! Okay. So, so the first step is assuming a form, right? So why it's something like following the same notation j from c to p is. J, so J and then a new new gets S, right? Um, so I'm, I'm just taking this. So what we should so we have Y, then we need the Y prime and the X times Y prime. And then we need x times y double prime, x squared times y double prime. That's quite a lot different, different kind of kind of terms. And we'll do it one by one. So we make it this way. We also need the y prime. Okay, and later on we we'll also need to x times that, but then let's get the double prime first. Okay. So we have, we have all these, and then we need x times this one. Uh, but before we do that, we so if you follow my way, I like to uh, shift this to say, if I can remember all what I want to say. So, so basically, this j minus one becomes j. Right? Or if you do it two step, j minus one becomes j prime. So j is j prime plus one. So it's J prime plus one. And the sum of J prime, but we'll later on just say J prime to get back to J. J prime is like J minus one is J prime, so J prime is J. J is J prime plus one, so this J plus one. That's the only thing we can work out is this j prime, if it's j minus one, j is zero, that it's minus one, so it's stuff from minus one. Okay, so that's, that's my point. And now, uh, same thing for y double prime. Except uh, now it's minus two. So j prime becomes j plus two. So same thing. So we start with minus two. So j is j prime plus two. So it's j plus two plus this. Everything. 
Two plus eight. <laughs> okay. And then uh, we need two more. We need the x times this other one. I haven't worked out this one. X times this. So x times this is we don't need to switch because uh, we already can get rid of this minus one. So that's the two. Just straight forward. We go back to the. Uh -huh. we, go, we go back to J equals zero at our start. We don't use our new. Uh, yeah, this I, I'm just multiply this by x. Okay. Multiply this one, not this one. Okay. I'll multiply this one. Oh, because it because you have a minus one x to the minus one. You multiply by x, you cancel this. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That's it. Yeah. And now we have. X times this, and then X, X squared times this. So X times what is that equaling is uh, basically that's why in two steps. So one is just what is that the same? And this becomes two. One is to get it that. So this is sub like this one. So you. You can sweep it like this one. Two plus s is just like this. Two plus one. J plus one minus one becomes two. Okay. So last one. Now it become easy again because uh, you have minus two here, you multiply by x squared, so you don't need to switch. Okay, no, it's, it's a lot, but uh, I just need to be a little patient to work this thing out. So we, we have everything we need. And then so we plug in all these terms, all these variables to the, the equations. And so keep in mind that uh, some terms are stuck with minus two, some stuck with minus one, and then the rest start from zero. So you always have the zero summation start from zero. And in enough space, I can add. But well, this one is better, I can just move it move to here. Okay. Okay, and uh, so to start, so this equation becomes first uh, order summation. So you have this term, this one, then so uh, let's group all everything that related to uh, a, a sub j, which doesn't involve the suit. Okay. This one has a suit. This one does not, because all the uncertain will with the proportion a sub j. So this one doesn't shift, this one doesn't shift, this one doesn't shift. But this one, this one, and this one doesn't shift. So we have three of them. They're all proportion a sub j. A sub j. It's a sub j. That's this one, and then this one, the this one multiplied by this factor. 
And so those are not shifted, and then we also need the those that shift to J plus one. We have this term and that term shift to J plus one. And then there's one term to shift to J plus two. So we have actually three two terms. And then It is with that. Let's see if we can work it. So we have this. This one is x times y double pi is this one, and then we have this uh, what this y uh, this y prime this one. Both are negative, so two times negative. This one is just two. This one this is okay. get it here so we get rid of that good. Final final terms is this similar. It's this way. Okay. No, no. It's oh we don't have we don't need this one. Oh okay, we don't actually need this one. We only have need x squared times j double pi, x times j double pi. We don't need y double pi itself. So actually I don't need that. So forget about this. Okay. Instead of assuming this new equation, our what are our x's? Because like our x is the third j plus x. Yeah, yeah. everything is proportional. All everything proportional to j x to j plus s. That's why I do the shift because I don't need to worry about each term carry a different x to its different power. Okay, so now I now I make sure I have all terms. Well, originally, you have one, two, three, four, five terms. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five terms. Where is the bracket? Multiply the x. Okay. Right. So that takes care of all the summation from j from 0 to p. Now I need to, uh, because I don't have to, I only start from minus 1. Okay, I only need the minus one, minus one term, right? And there are two of them. One is x times y double prime. The other is just y double prime. This one. Right there. So, yeah, and then what? x times y double prime and this one, they are both, they are both, uh, Both negative. So, J is minus one. So cancel this to the S. So this is S minus one. Okay. Both are uh, A multiplied by A sub zero. The J is minus one. So that this one just you C times uh, S. That's the sub zero and then X. Right? We need the minus two to the minus one two. And then there's nothing else. Right. That's easy too. That's nothing like to do. Okay. 
That's not too bad. That's a zero. Now this this part is uh, your question. So the initial initial condition is uh, from this from this one from this part because all the coefficient of all power of x should be zero. This is x to the s minus one. This is x to the s and this s and then the s plus j all positive j. So should this the coefficient should be zero. Uh, because you only multiply by a sub zero, you uh, don't actually want it to be zero because if it's zero, then yeah, you mean you just shift the shift this uh, shift the s and then just shift the index, and that uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So uh, assume a sub zero is non zero, and just use the s to to figure out what the power start from. Because this S is just an unknown index to see what power X is stuck as a major. So we'll keep A, a sub zero non zero. So, so the bracket is zero, so the bracket is zero. So we take the S out, so either S is zero or S minus one plus C is zero, so S is zero. Uh, one minus C. Okay. Take the S out, and the rest becomes S minus one plus C. So either S is zero, or S is one minus C. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. So there are two solutions for this one. Yeah. I think what my confusion I figured out now. Like, like we only are taking the A naught term. We forget zero. Right. Yeah, we we so a not it's not zero. We don't want it to zero. Yeah, but yeah, we're only six it to zero, then we actually basically just shift the whole series. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're putting that term. Yeah. And that's where we're getting our S yeah. from because that is the initial condition term. This is not initial condition. It, we, we don't have initial condition for this one. This it's a step. It makes sense because we, we assume this form, right? If we say a sub zero, we choose a sub zero is zero. Then say the first non zero one is a sub one, right? Then we might say that uh, shifted and uh, call a sub one, a sub now, even a sub zero, all you need to do is shift the s, right? It just just, uh, just means you also shift the s and s uh, becomes a uh, a new S and then uh, you get back to the same equation, same equation, but then this A sub zero becomes A sub one because you assume A sub zero is zero. Okay. So you are actually doing nothing by assuming A sub zero is zero. You still go back to the same place, right? <laughs> so, so this, you, you write this and you, you assume you are not setting it to zero because it actually, it actually should be the same. Same situation, you're back to the same situation. Okay, so, so that is the most, most general, general situation, set in non zero, a sub zero, a sub zero, and then just choose an S that the bracket is zero. There are two cases one is zero, S is zero, the other is one minus C. So that they will generally give you two solutions unless uh, there's something happen, either there's when you do the iteration, maybe the coefficient truncate, and then you get a polynomial. Or, or if, uh, if there's, there's a situation that the, the coefficient becomes infinite, and then uh, that means you don't have a solution. Okay, so iterate that. That depends on these. May, I mean, that might may, may, may not happen. It depends on all these parameters A, B, C. Okay, but generally we can write down the iteration equation from this. Now this uh, this curly bracket is zero. But yeah, okay. yeah. Why you start of sum at J to zero from the second? Like in the chunk. Yeah. This one? 
It's the start of change of zero. I just write out the explicitly out. So we don't start with minus one because some of the terms start with zero explicitly. So they don't have minus one term. You cannot, like for this one, you cannot set J for minus one because we, we, we right. don't def define it. It's not defined. So A is start from A sub zero. Or the AJ start from J to zero. So this is how we assume the form of your solution. So you already define your form. You only have to include all the A's are A from A0, A1, A2, A3. So that's how you define your solution. But uh, exactly what the power of X start from depends on your S. So you, are, you already move your free, freedom mm -hmm. in the parameter S. And you want to determine the, what S is by the initial, initial equation. So you add, this form doesn't uh, remove your freedom or the general, general situation, what the, what the series should, should start from any power of X. That is to, to be determined by the equation for S. Okay, but then once you choose that, your A start from A sub zero. You don't get A my A to minus one, A sub minus one. You don't have that because that's not included in your form. Okay. Right, so this, uh, so these are from all the terms that sum from sub J sub zero to infinity. This this extra equation is because we did we did the shift, so. Uh, there's extra minus one, there, but the uh, it's a j minus one actually gives you the a sub zero because uh, j is minus one. You shift it already, so this becomes a sub zero. Okay, is it Are you still confused about something? Sorry, I, I don't want to see. I should do everything in the positive direction. Yeah, the book uses a different method. That's yeah. how that's how yeah. you I use I I don't actually follow the book methods. I, I find it confusing for myself. <laughs> so I'm, I'm each each like person has his preference. Yeah. Understand both ways. This yeah. has a, another approach to it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah. Some people are doesn't require shifting and can write down this equation naturally and then they get happy. I just shifted in the other way. Yeah, that, that could be the case. <laughs> I, 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 I found this way to more systematic to, uh, to that. More systematic means uh, less, less possibility for error. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I'm saying. Okay. But uh, mm -hmm. if your, if your preference is different, then that, that's fine. Okay, so do you want me to keep, keep getting the solving this one? Yeah, I just want to make sure I don't yeah. do the next yeah. step. Yeah, yeah. So, so finally, it will ask you to do the convergence. It doesn't ask you to sum over it to get to a close form. And probably a little bit difficult to get to a close form because of all these uh, extra parameters. But the, the uh, A's are solved by the iterations except with big bracket to zero. So that means uh, this bracket has two terms. One is uh, proposed to A sub J, the other proposed to A sub J plus one. You set that to zero. So basically, you can solve. A sub J plus one of A sub J by just dividing this the second square bracket first term. Right. So the whole thing is zero. So you can satisfy that by A sub J plus one equals the first term and divided by the coefficient of A sub J plus one. Just write out then 
now we can do a, some, some more simplification for the proposal J plus S. J plus S. And we have J plus S minus one plus one plus A plus B. And combine these two. So we so consider one J plus S plus A plus B. And this two, and then you are and divided by this thing. This thing also has a common term, so you plus yes. Right. And I, I forgot to set S is zero. I want to see, or maybe because we have two two choices, so uh, that the uh, we better leave it as general. So let's get this out of here. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the best we can write it. So now you have a recurrence relation. So once you have a sub j, you can get a, a sub j plus one. So because we assume a, a sub zero is non zero, so start with j from zero and get the uh, a1, and then you get the a1 here, you get a2, and so on, and so on. You can put it in the computer and then get all the aj if you need it, right? But uh, it's only useful that this relation is useful only with if it's convergent. Okay, so we need to test the convergence, so that's the, that's the question answer. Um, so um, is it okay up to this this up to this step? I'm I'm why are so why are we trying to find the a to the j plus one? Is that just the test conversion? Because we need all the j the solution is all the j. <laughs> all these are unknown coefficients you need to solve. And then the, the question would finally depends on one arbitrary proportionality constant because of this linear equation. If y is a solution, y times any any constant is also a solution. So there will be one constant left. And so it's the, the, your solution will be proportional to one of the constant. And that constant might as, as well be just a sub zero. If you have a sub zero, you can solve a sub one. Yeah. That propose a sub zero, put it back a sub one here, you get a sub two, and also propose a sub zero, and so on. So after the same propose a sub zero, but uh, the relationship uh, for all the other a, a one, a two, a three, uh, in terms of a sub zero, that all the, all the proportionality constant can be worked out by this recurrence relation. And that supposedly will, will give you. I mean, that that is the solution if uh, you're satisfied with a numerical solution. And remember, in the, the simple harmonic oscillator, we, can, uh, we try to sum over that uh, by looking at the form and see if uh, we can figure out there's a nicer form or sum it in the closed form. Uh, it may or may not be possible for this one because of. Uh, more complicated form, you have this, uh, this, this j and then j plus a constant and then another constant. That makes it more complicated to get to a closed form. Uh, it may, may or may not be possible. But, uh, you can, but the question just asks you for the convergence and you can just see, we can figure out the convergence. Okay, so. Uh, Let's let's look at this one. Uh, see if this makes sense. Now to, to test it now we can have two cases uh, just substitute s equals this c zero or one minus c. So for s is zero, then uh k I think it's worth divided by this J. 
because uh, later on we'll test the uh, first we'll, the easier test would be the ratio test where you remember to test the ratio and see if it is uh, greater than one or less than one that would be the elevator but uh, if it is equal to, equal to one then you need to do another test okay um, no, this substitute everything with J because okay. S is zero. K plus K B plus K plus B divided by K plus one. K plus K plus C. Okay. Now the convergence is a little bit complicated now because you can see that it goes to one for j goes to infinity, right? Uh, you have j square, the leading term is j square, and then you have this uh, also uh, in the denominator, the leading term is also j square, so if j goes to infinity, this goes to goes to one, so that, uh, right, uh, but I mean, I, I missed, uh, when you do the way through test, you need to you need the X also, so I should actually took that comment first. So, so this is, this is, this is correct. There's nothing wrong with this one. So, uh, this is how you do the iteration, but the way through test is actually, Multiplied by this x. x. Right. It's, uh, I only I mean need to. Uh, I only need to say. Right. It's just that's what determined the, the emergency. So right. So J this is J square and then this is uh, J square also in both numerator and denominator. So it just tends to the ratio of this two term, which is just X. So uh, looks like uh, it's converging. But I imagine it depends on x. Yeah, I mean, if if the absolute value, so not similar is converging. X is greater than one. That's diverging. Right. So the only uh, subtlety is x. The x equals to one. Right. So x equals to one, uh, I think can do a, do a, a expansion in terms of j or inverse of j and use the Gauss test. I think you can use the Gauss test. You want me to work out the Gauss test? <laughs> I think let me look at whether I actually did the Gauss test. Mm -hmm. This is 7.5.5, right? Uh, let me look at that. Let me first check whether I get everything correctly. Terms. Ah, yeah, that is I'm looking at the incorrect one because I have there are two cases. Yes, S is zero or S is one minus zero. That is another situation. 
So for this one, it seems like I, yeah, yeah, that's right. So I did it just like what I did. So um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I did it. I did the DAO's test. Yeah, no, 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 one so we let's test this one so um, just very sure not sure the original test is from for case ratio or the inverse of that I can look back this in chapter one the Gauss test about um uh, so it's, it's on page nine very early Actually, the other way around. Actually, if you, uh, at least the original test is test the other way around. So, okay. Like this ratio, so basically inverse of that. So what you want is uh, keep different order. So you have three. It's better to just write it out explicitly. So you have J square. And then this is at the uh, j goes to the j square, and then you have one plus c times j, and then you have a c. So this one you have j square, and then you have a plus b times j, and then plus b. Okay, on the Gauss test, you want you to get to the inverse power of this uh, one of uh, your uh, index. So, so you can see all that. You divide everything by j squared, so one plus t of j, and then plus t of j. Okay, and then uh, this, because we, we just need to get the expansion of the, the inverse power of J, so we get inverse this one. And we only need the, in, uh, the leading term and get the coefficient. If the coefficient is one, then you get in, get into trouble and then you need the next order. Uh, if it plus five, greater or less than one, then you have the term range. Let's, let's, let's just try the first, the one over J, J terms only. So this will multiply by inverse of this one. You can group that as a small way as well, so that you can No, I'm not just just in what this this the denominator and back of the, the numerator. So now you can combine all the terms. Just multiply this series with this. This is a, this is a polynomial, that's fine. So multiply this with, with this series and keep the, see if uh, the leading order term will give, give us some anything, right? So the leading order, of course, is one. The next order is one over J. 
C1, we have, so we have a one over G, one plus C times this uh, over J times one, and then one times minus A plus B over J. This is J squared, also is J squared, so we keep that term. The order of one over J, so we have the coefficient and what in the Gauss test calls H. The H is uh, one plus C minus A plus B. Minus A plus B, so minus A. So they're still undetermined. So uh, this uh, where the H is greater than zero or less than zero from the Gauss test. If uh, if H is less than zero, is divergent. If H H is greater than, I mean no, not greater than zero, greater than one. If H is less than one, that's divergent. If H is greater than one, that is uh, convergent. Uh, if H is one, then you need the second order of the term, right? Um, so anyway, just keep, just say whether H is, H is uh, less than one is divergent. And one is and the edges is this factor. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just stay with this one because uh, these are arbitrary numbers, so you can always be in either either cases uh, possible. Let's see if I stop here. And then, oh, actually, there's a. Uh, I actually should separate the two cases. Uh, this is actually just for H, X is uh, equal to one. Because if, if X is negative one, although the ratio is still one, the, the sign is alternate because uh, the leading order is J squared, both in the numerator and denominator. If this become alternate series for the the condition for convergence is different. The convergent convergent for x minus one the convergence is just required that uh, this is a, like a, a positive number because it's, it's the ratio is one. Uh, you only need that uh, the, you only need x is less than x is greater than zero x is greater than zero so that uh, yeah so that uh, because it's alternate series that will make it uh, uh, converging so at the uh, X is plus one and not minus one is different. This situation. <laughs> right, so, uh, let's, uh, that is uh, the, the limitless criterion for alternate series. Right, uh, So this is for, for the first case. For the second case, is still this one. Now, except that now you, you substitute. Uh, the, the, yeah, the S is one minus C. So it will be very similar. And then the test is should be very similar, not exactly this number. You need to figure out what the S is. And, uh, the S is one minus C, put it again, and do the same thing. Uh, let's see if I test that one. Mm. It seems like, it, but anyway, so it, it just, 
see you. Okay, you, you get that uh, the, the test. I mean, it's it's um, just elementary thing. The, the test you see is when you forget about that, you can go back to the chapter one. The, uh, this is very very early section one point one. I just uh, see how you test the convergence of series. Any more questions about this 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 one? Okay, so. Let's just stop this, not making it too long. <laughs>